Hello my friends, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, I hope you've all been keeping very, very well. I've been so, so busy painting commissions and very big abstract artwork these past couple of weeks. Very, very busy. But I'm back now with a lovely little tutorial. It's going to be, I don't know if you can see it here, beautiful little sunset snow scene. Something nice and simple, but something very eye-catching with some little broken fences sort of going off on an angle. Um, Beautiful little snow scene. I'm going to paint it here on the canvas, 16 by 12. Um, I'm all ready to go. I, I must just put some colours on my palette. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to painting this for a change. Nice, cool colours, warm and cool. So a good experiment here now to try um, to work on complementary colours. Okay. Um, if you don't know, if for those of you who still don't know, I haven't gone back on Facebook just yet. I'm so so busy, and um, I can see there are so many notifications on my Facebook page. I get messages and stuff like that. Um, but I'm just so busy at the moment. I just do not have physical time to go on Facebook and just reply to everyone. It just takes up so much time. Um, I hope you understand. I just have a lot of stuff going on at the moment. So don't worry, I will be back very soon if you're trying to contact me on Facebook. Um, just know that I'm actually not on Facebook just yet. My page is still open, but I haven't logged on or anything like that um, for a few weeks. Uh, with just so much stuff going on, you know, work-wise and family life and all that kind of thing. So I hope you understand I just wanted to, con to try and concentrate on lots of these paintings I'm trying to get done for customers. Um, I'm really kind of constantly painting. I'm just going constantly every day. Um, so it's just so, so busy at the moment. And I fear if I go back on Facebook too soon, I, I'm just going to be completely distracted from what I should be doing, um, you know, trying to get things done. All right, so that's, that's the worry about Facebook. I find... When people tend to go on Facebook, they tend to get consumed and, you know, the hours go by and, you know, you have achieved nothing really apart from putting a few posts on Facebook. So I just have so much to do and I want to try and achieve as much as I can um, in the next week or so. Um, but then when things settle down, I go back on Facebook and I kind of reply to all my messages then and all that kind of stuff, okay? So I do apologise for that if you're trying to contact me on Facebook. I apologise. You can still email me. My email address is on my YouTube channel and it's on Patreon for my patrons. Um, okay, let's try this. I'm looking forward to this. Something nice and relaxed and something nice and subtle for a change. Okay, nothing too dramatic. Grab your stuff if you want to follow me along. I would really appreciate um, you trying this. Just try it and see how you get on. Okay, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. There's a reference photograph. Isn't that beautiful? Lovely warm colours, lovely cool snow. I'm looking forward to painting this. This is going to be nice. Okay, I'm going to take um, a pencil. A regular pencil, okay? I get so many questions about pencils. It's a regular pencil. Don't worry. Um, let's just put in a very rough line up here of that tree line, okay? It's just a very, very light indication. See that? Um... You see this line coming down with this, the bottom of the fence post? That's the line I want to get right. Okay, so I'm going to go like that. And I think that's all we need to do. We can worry about fences and stuff later. I'll tell you what colours I have. Lovely warm palette today. Titanium white, magenta, phthalo blue, Naples yellow, burnt cyanide, alizarin crimson, black, burnt umber, and cadmium yellow. There... Is my colors that's it i'm going to start with a nice small flat brush okay nothing fancy a cheap synthetic soft flat brush and a nice warm blue sky let's start let's take some cadmium or titanium white sorry titanium white a little phthalo blue mix that together and i'm going to put a touch of crimson into this so I want to go for a nice warm blue first. Let's have a look at this. Okay, I'll go with that. Now, this canvas is not primed because I bought this canvas in the art store. It's a good quality canvas. It's a Win Windsor Newton um, canvas. So they're fairly good quality and I don't want 
too much oiliness on the surface so it's just right i think the amount of soakage in the canvas is just right for what i want and if it allow the snow to dry a little bit quicker for me and i can not don't have to worry about um colors being wet for too long on the canvas so it's just enough it's not too oily and it's not too 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 dry it's just right now a bit more white and as it comes down i'll start adding more white in go along like that as it comes over to the sun i'm going to start warming this color up a lot I'm going to take some more crimson in this. A tiny touch of turpentine now just to dampen that. See, just a little bit, dry it a bit, just take some off. You don't want it very, very wet, okay? I'm going to start warming this a little as it comes over. Now, there's no pink in that sky, I can see. I'm going to take some Naples yellow with some white and just pop a little touch of that pink in there. So you can see it's a very soft pastel kind of a colour, isn't it? Come right down here now as it comes across i'm going to add more pink into the blue okay because if i put this yellowy fawn kind of a yellowy pastel color into the blue it'll start going green we don't want that so just where the blue is a little touch of pink now you've probably seen me do this a hundred times wherever there's a blue just add a little touch of light pink in between and soften them across both colors that way you don't have any muddy colors you see it's just nice and soft it goes from blue into a warm color and i think that's okay now i want to darken it slightly up here it's slightly richer up there isn't it take a bit of that blue and go right up here soften some of that in soften it across very gently You can use your soft blender brush for this if you like, but I think this brush is fine. Very lightly. Okay, and maybe a bit more. And in fact, this time I'll take some phthalo blue and a touch of black. And then a touch of magenta. I just want to go really nice and dark up here in this corner. There's a beautiful contrast in the sky up here. So I'm just going to soften that down very gently, just in one corner. You see it? Look, and just soften it outwards, blend it away. Okay, I'm happy enough with that. <clears throat> So the next step in this is I want to start warming all these colors down here and then going into my trees. So I'm going to get a clean brush for this. Switch brushes. Let's get a nice, clean, flat-ish kind of a brush, okay? See what I mean? Dampen that, dry it, and let's go into some nice warm colors now straight away. Let's get some cadmium yellow. And let's get a little crimson. Now that'll give me a nice orange, won't it? Then let's take some Naples yellow. The Naples yellow will really make this nice and soft. Okay, I'm going to start with Naples yellow here. Now there's only a hint of yellow, mind you. There's not a huge amount of yellow. It's just down in the very corner, isn't it? That yellow. But first I'm just going to sort of soften this across and just up very gently i only want this just in the bottom corner okay so you can see that slight glow down on the right hand side of the painting <clears throat> then i'm going to start warming these colors i'll start with crimson cadmium yellow again plenty of that and then i'm going to take a touch of burnt sienna now Let's see what happens. I'm going to start painting my trees with this colour. Let me take a look. And you see what I'm doing? I'm just using the very corner of my brush like this. I'm just kind of softening it in here and there, letting it dance around. Now 
okay just like that and you can see that i'm softening it up into the sky a little as well see what i mean so it's disappearing off down into that sun now i'm going to go and take a touch of turpentine take a bit more yellow a bit more crimson and some burnt sienna We have a very ready orange color coming in down here, don't we? I'm just going to soften that in. Now, I'm going to take some Naples yellow and put it into that. I want to try and replicate that kind of warm color just down at the end. It's a beautiful warm color. You see that? Let's try some more Naples yellow and even a hint of white. Look, let's just brighten it up. Give us that nice pastel y sort of a colour. And I'm putting plenty of crimson into this now. I want that kind of slightly pinky hue. You see that colour there? Soften it up into the yellow. And come right down with that colour. That hint of crimson really just makes that kind of a lovely warm salmon kind of a colour. Okay? Now I'm going to stop there. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Then I'm going to go take some crimson and some white and some Naples yellow. I have, by the way, very little thinners in this. So I'm going to go as far as there. Next, I'm going to start putting in these darker trees. Okay, give the brush a quick clean. Let's go into some burnt umber and I'm going to take some magenta as well. Again, the hint of magenta in the burnt umber now will just tie in with the wintry colours, okay? It really will. And let's take a hint of black as well. Looking at the photograph, it's almost black, isn't it? But I'm going to put this hint of burnt umber and magenta in there as well. I just think it'll be a more complementary colour so let me see now let's start let's start um how's about that um, i'm going to warm it on this side and cool it on this side okay give me a touch of crimson and i'm going to start so you can see that pinky brown now that we have that's perfect i'm going to start softening this across just into that warmer colour and then coming back And you can see the way I'm using my brush on its side. I'm just kind of putting a couple of these little uprights in here, just to suggest little pointy trees and stuff like that off in the distance. Okay. Don't worry about the ends. We'll be putting nice mist across the ends very soon. Round and little circles, look, just switch your brush round and round and round. Add one or two little pointy trees here and there just to break it up i see so many people when they're painting trees they just go along and they dab like this all the way across and it just looks completely the same all the way the trick is to just vary it make it slightly different as you go now i'm going to start adding some phthalo blue and magenta into this it's going to start getting much cooler okay So it's much more of a purpley colour as it's coming across. You can even take a touch of white in there as well. You really want to cool it down a bit. So I go here first, just switch it around. As it comes across, then you're just softening this in to the darker colour, you see? Just here and there. It creates a nice contrast. And then again, let's just put some little uh, pointy ones just here and there. See? And the rough edge of the brush is just perfect for this. So you can see what I mean now, look. Just a couple of little pointy edges. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, as it comes down here now, I'm going to start lightening. I'm going to take some white and some phthalo blue. 
So now we're going nice and bright. Well, not bright, but a kind of a shadowy, snowy colour. Okay, and don't be afraid to put plenty of blue into this. Because remember, the important thing with snow scenes is a lot of people will assume that snow is just white, but in actual fact, the snow is reflecting the colours of the sky. That's probably the most important aspect of painting snow. So you're going to be reflecting the colours up in the sky. So if your sky is a nice, rich kind of a bluey colour, there's a good chance your snow is going to be that colour as well. Okay, that's what I would say. So magenta, thalo blue, and some white. And it's soften that across. Now as it comes across, okay, I don't want these two colours mixing because they're going to go muddy. So what I'll do is I'll take some magenta and some white. And I'll start with this colour first, you see. So that pinky colour will now soften through nicely. Just a little, then clean your brush. I'm going to pick up some of that white and a little magenta and a touch of Naples yellow. I'm just going to put that lovely pink colour over the true hair. And what I want to do is create a nice mist. You see this line we have? Okay, so how do we create a nice misty effect on that? We don't want this for this very sort of solid line. So I'm going to just dry my brush and I'm going to just get my brush and go around little circles, look. And I'm just going to soften that through there. All the way across. And the idea is we just have this lovely mist. So the tree line is softening, disappearing down into that lovely mist. Okay, just like that. Then take a nice fan brush and just pull that all together. There, see, just like that. Now this is probably the trickiest part of the whole painting, this line of trees across here and all this mist. I would say it's probably the trickiest part of this entire painting. After this, it just gets, starts getting easier. Okay, let's come on down here now and start putting in all of this lovely color. I'll go back to my bigger brush, my slightly bigger brush. I'm gonna take some phthalo blue. And I'm gonna mix a lot of this now. So plenty of turps, look, see it running? Plenty of turps. The white will thicken it up then, you see? Plenty of white, plenty of magenta. Lovely pinky colour. Have a look at this now. Okay, let's go lighter again. Don't be afraid of your white. Use plenty of white. Fill this in. There we go. Nice background colour. This is just sort of the filling in stage now. This is what I'm going to call this. Okay? The filling in. Now, as it comes up, I'm going to start warming this. You can see it goes, it goes from a kind of a cool blue into a pink, and then it goes into these warm colours. So we need to make a nice warm colour for that, for, for just there. Let's take some crimson, lots of white, and just a hint of the blue then, okay? So we have a nice pinky colour. Look at that. Perfect. Nice pink, softening into this fawny, orangey colour. Picking up that orangey colour as it comes up, okay? Softening it gently across and down. So you can get the idea now we're going from a cool colour to a slightly warmer pinky colour and over into our yellows. There we go. Now, let's get some more white. 
So I can already see now the lovely colours coming out in this painting. It's really eye-catching, isn't it? I know it's a very simple scene, but the colours alone, for me, really catch the eye in this. So I'm going to come across here now and start putting in this lovely pinky shade, magenta and phthalo blue, more magenta. And the trick with this kind of painting is don't think about it too much, okay? Just mix your colour. If you're happy enough with your colour, put it straight on. Don't sit for ages thinking about colours and, you know, trying to get your colour just right. I find if I sit for too long thinking about a colour, it, thinking that it's not right or it's too dark or it's too light, then you just become distracted and you lose you lose the, the kind of the substance of the painting. So get your colour, put it on. If it's wrong, you can just change it. All right? Don't worry. Okay, there we go. We have our base. Our basis is in now for our wonderful snow down here. Okay. I'm just going to have a good look at the reference photograph there now, just to see what step we should do next. I'm, I'm going to actually put this brush down. I'm going to get a slightly flatter brush. Now, this is the trick, okay? A flat brush. Something with a fairly flat edge on it. I'm going to mix a slightly darker purple and start pulling in the ripples of the snow just here and there, okay? So magenta, phthalo blue. I might take a hint of crimson, actually. Looking at the darker colour, it's a warm, almost like a ready brown colour. Maybe a hint of burnt umber. Plenty of crimson. We have this beautiful, warm, kind of a purpley colour, okay? Now, I'm going to just look at that. Yeah, that's good. Um, you see all these little waves in the snow? Look, I'm just going to start pulling them in. And then I'm just going to sort of let them soften as they go way off into the distance and make them thinner, just with the corner of my brush. You see that? Just letting it disappear off, barely putting any paint whatsoever onto this. And just be very loose. You don't have to really go to town with this. Just very, very loose, okay? Look. They're just sort of crisscrossing around, up and down. As it comes out to the front, we can kind of do more work on these ones as we go. And I'm just going to kind of pick out the line of the fence where it's coming down here now. Okay, just like that. So now we have a general line, you see? Then we can start to become more blue with all of this. Blue and magenta and start pulling in some proper, filling it in, look. Filling in just under these, softening it down. And I'm not copying this photograph exactly now, I'm just putting my own interpretation on this, okay? You could be here for hours trying to copy every single brushstroke on that photograph. I prefer, I think it's much easier just to put your own stamp on a painting. I just think it's much nicer. So I'm just kind of concentrating now on all the dark colours first. And I might even, once I have that colour, as I have that colour, I might just go along here and put one or two in over here as well. The very shallow ones just over here, look, just a suggestion of movement and thickness in the snow, that's all. Okay, just like that. Now, next, I'm going to just take my soft fan brush. I'm going to soften all them in. See? So they're softening back into the snow then gently. Just follow some of the shapes. And already now we can start to see some of... See that? If I cover this glaze from the window... You can see, we already have a little bit of movement coming into play. Now, let's start 
putting in some of these uprights. I can see lots of little uprights up here, like bits of grasses and stuff like that sticking up. I'm going to start putting those in. And for that, I need a fan brush. I'm going to take a little fan brush. Uh, you could use a very flat, flat brush if you had one, um, like a little flat stubby here. But I think a fan brush might work a little better for this. Let me just have a look and see what I have now. I have a very thin fan brush here. This might do. Um, bum, 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 bum. It's always difficult trying to find a good fan brush, isn't it? Because they're always well used, these fan brushes. I think I'll try this new little one here. Okay. I'm going to get a very light colour. I'm going to mix a very light warm colour. Take some white. Some Naples yellow. And some crimson. Okay. But there's a lot more Naples yellow in this. So the sun is catching some of this grassy stuff that's sticking up. And I may even take a hint of cadmium yellow as well. Now, I'm not sure if this fan brush will do the job, but let me try. The idea is to just put a few little bits like this, okay? Just here and there, across the canvas, and leave it sort of disappear off into the distance, okay? I just want to create the impression of some kind of warm grasses coming into the painting. A little bit more crimson, perhaps. And you see where I'm just kind of dabbing? Letting it disappear off into the distance, like that. Almost rubbing them into that snow underneath as well, off in the distance there. As it comes across, then they will start getting cooler, but I just want to get some nice warm ones in here for now. Could do this as well, look. Just give the impression of some little grasses popping up here and there. So I'm just doing the warmer colour, well, I have it on my fan brush anyway, I might as well. And just bring them slightly down, flicking it upwards just to leave them come forward on the canvas just a bit, then pop in one or two thick ones like that. So you can kind of see the impression I'm getting now. Just very distant snowy grass popping up here and there. As it comes over here, I'm going to start making it much brighter and bluer. Okay, so some white and some blue. And start slowly bringing them across like that. And it's just really to give an impression. Get a bit more blue. What I want is a very sort of a brightish blue. Ah, there we go, that's better. Put a few way up in the distance there as well, look. It's just to give the impression. All we're going for is an impression, that's all. Now, I'm going to take some white with some phthalo blue and some magenta. And I'm going to just start dabbing the suggestion of just little rough bits of snow here and there throughout this. It's really just to sit all of this down. Okay? And look, you can even swirl it around if you like. See, I'm very loose with the brush. That's all I want to do. Very, very loose. And this is all the very early stages as well, okay? I'm just trying to simplify this for you. Now, I'm going to go back to 
smaller flatter brush nice clean flat brush I'm going to start putting some little highlights in on our snow okay I'm going to take some white some magenta and a little Naples yellow so those two colors with some white and it's a light pink kind of a light pinky color I have and I'm going to just start putting in some highlights where the snow is just kind of catching or where the light is catching some of the snow here and there again slightly warmer we want this a nice warm warm color okay a very warm pink and I'm softening them down so when I do the initial line like this I'm just going to soften it then down into the snow underneath And it's just an impression okay you don't really want to be going for a photograph type of a picture so i'll just an impression a nice gentle little impression okay you see they're just little little flicks And remember this is now is just early stages that i'm doing this is all early early stages the next thing i'm going to do is start putting in some very bright whitey blues so i'm just looking at different shades and putting them in as i go that's all all i'm doing some nice bright blues we have nice bright blues down here Let's get some phthalo blue and some white okay And with painting snow, it's all about the movement of the brush. That's probably the most important aspect of painting a snow scene. You're moving your brush. You're imagining the snow flowing around on the canvas, okay? So, for instance, um, let me pick one here now. Let's go like this here. And I'm going to let it come down and swoop along, you see? letting it swoop outwards so when painting snow like this there's hardly any straight lines whatsoever it's all moving you see it's all moving with the snow So you can see it's starting it's just starting to come to life i will be putting in some very bright highlights later on okay so don't worry about these beautiful bright highlights they will come as well i'm going to go over here and start lightening this side it needs to be slightly brighter popping some bright color through there And I might even use my palette knife as well very soon to get some real bright colours going. Soften this into the fan brush. Remember, nice and soft, okay? Doesn't have to be, you know, all thick brush lines. Make it nice and soft. That will help give you some softness to a snow scene. Okay? like that now i will be putting in some stronger shadows in there very very soon as well um in fact i might even do it now while i have this little brush i might you know what i'll do i'll go to a slightly smaller brush a small pointy brush get some nice warm color okay a nice plum 
and I'll go in here and just put some nice strong lines just some nice little shadows because your darks are very important as well aren't they the because you see the darks will highlight the lights they'll bring the lights out so the dark colors are very important And I'm going to mix again a nice rich dark so you can see what I mean you're just kind of constantly going over and over and over just until you build up what you want just keep adding color until you're happy obviously I'm not happy quite yet I just want to keep wanting to Keep wanting to add little touches of darks here and there. Okay. I'll stop at that now just for a moment. I need to top up my turpentine, my thinners, and a little touch of magenta. And I'm going to start working perhaps on the fences. Before I do, actually, I just want to get some nice snow going across here. I'm going to take some white. And a hint of phthalo blue perhaps with some pink even let's take some pink let's take some magenta and i want to just create some nice texture going across here now you can see how easy it is just to create a nice texture in a snow scene just with your palette knife Okay, just have a bit of fun with your knife, don't be shy. That create a nice rough surface, yes? Right, I think we're ready for fence posts. And this is where we really start having some fun. Fence posts. I'll take a small pointy brush. I'm going to dampen that. I'm going to take loads of burnt umber I'm going to take some phthalo blue loads of magenta we have a very rich purpley browny kind of a shade here okay very very dark it's almost a black but it's a warmish purpley black okay that's probably the easiest way of describing the color a very warmish black let's start with the first one here it comes up very very high doesn't it it starts around here comes right up at an angle almost out of the painting into the sky let's just do that keep cleaning your brush and going back in that's the trick get rid of that dark color or that that, that snowy color off of your brush because you'll pick up some of that whitey color you see so clean your brush again go back in then these ones over here i'm going to make these nice and dark some black and magenta this one over here goes say let's go like this will we it's not falling so much and then the distant one does fall like that okay so these are just the lines the next thing I want to do is get my palette knife and I want to use my nice flat one so I'm not going to use these I'm going to use my nice flat palette knife wherever it may be it's around here oh yes here we go nice flat palette knife like that I'm going to mix some very very dark color now okay let me just get some phthalo blue first on my palette 
I'm going to go for a very dark, dark purple. I'll take some magenta, some stale blue. Mix them together there, like that, and a hint of black then. It may look black to you on camera, but it's a very, very dark, rich purple. I'm simply going to go like this. Along the edge of my post, just like that. Okay. Then, this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to mix some white into that colour. So you just want a white, marbly kind of a colour, okay? A bit of pink in this. And I'm going to just start going. Now, I'm going to swoop this around in a slight curve, okay? You see? A little, little curve. Just around. You see the way I kind of flicked it very, very slightly as it came around? I think that's the trick. Little flick. It's very similar technique to when you're painting um, a birch tree. A lot of people use this technique for painting birch trees. Okay, now when you get to that stage, then I take a fan brush, nice clean fan brush, and I'm going to start pulling little curves into this look. Just to soften them together in the middle where they meet. That's all. Okay? Just like that. Now, I'll take my small pointy brush again and just go with some black. And I just want to really put a dark, dark line of black just kind of along here and there at the back because it's very, really dark at the back, isn't it? Just to really separate it from the background. That's all. Okay. We can add a little bit more. There we go. So I have that part done. After that, I'm going to start adding some lighter, warmer colour just to the front of the post. I'm going to take some crimson and some maple yellow. Then some white. Now with that colour, I'm just going to go up here first. Just pop a little bit of that on. It's just catching the light up on top there, okay? Then I use my same palette knife and I go into some of that colour. Naples yellow, a little magenta, and some white. Now the trick is lots of Naples yellow because we want to catch the sunlight from that sun. Then let's just here and there. See? Catch a little of that sunlight. And again, just with the fan brush, let me get a different fan brush. With the fan brush then, just very gently pull those in. So we have a nice warm color catching the sunlight. Now it's basically the same for these two. Um, there's not much really showing on those two down there. I'm just going to take a tiny touch of light. I think just the tiniest touch is enough for these ones down here, yes? 
you don't need to go overboard with those because they're just very far off in the distance can just soften that knife line back in slightly and then I'll take a little black pop a little black just on the back of them it's only a tiny bit now it's just really easy to make them stand out that little bit more see what I mean next thing I'm going to do is just put in these wires so I think a very very dark dark purple again Phthalo blue, some magenta, and a hint of black. So a very dark, dark, dark purple. And simply, um, don't be afraid. Let's just go for it. This one kind of comes down, and then it goes up like that, doesn't it? Don't be afraid, let's just go for it. It's only paint. Come on. This will give you some confidence. This one kind of comes like that, goes up slightly. Straight line, away like that. We have a small one just here, look, sort of falling down into the snow. Just go for it, okay? Try not to think too much about it, about ruining the painting, because you'll never do it. Just grab it and go. Um, I have a small one here, it just sort of disappears into the snow, doesn't it, like that? And these small ones back here. Just a little. They're very rickety old fences now, so I'm not going to see much on these. And maybe just bring it down into the snow. Now, I will make this post much thicker. I think it needs to be thicker, and I need a lot more blue in the post. Just looking back at the reference photograph every now and then, you kind of notice these little things, don't you? Small little things. It just needs, I think a bit more punch just like this okay I think so we can just you know we can add more lights to it then and perhaps it just maybe some white on its own also just to indicate a more snowy feel on the post okay and Touch here and there. And that. Touch here and there. Now the next important thing I think for me, let me just soften the white in here slightly. Um, do you know that those little bits of snow on the wires? So I think we will have to do something with those. Um, let me see. Hmm. I'm thinking first I might use a palette knife with some of this bright blue. Even a hint of magenta. And white. A very bright pinky blue again. And I'm thinking I might try this. Just to begin with, I just want to get a hint of that colour. On top of the wires, okay? First, I'll do this first. And you can see, really, it's just to catch the highlight of the snow more than anything else. And then, I'm thinking with a small palette knife, should we try this? With the tip of our palette knives, we could just put a little 
dabs of paint. How about that? Would that work? Let me know what you think. It's really just an impression. Do you think we have an impression going? I don't think it's that bad, to be quite honest. I think it's nice. I'd rather like it. Let's mix up a bit more. Get some of that, some magenta, some Naples yellow, and go for a nice warm color. That nice warm pinky color as well is in there, isn't it? So they're catching the sunlight. And you can see I'm just being very sort of, I suppose, almost just messy, really. Okay? You know, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect in every way. It's a painting. It's your painting. You can do with it as you please. Now, I'm going to get my fan brush. And I'm going to take some of that brighter color. Okay? Naples yellow, magenta, and white. And I'm going to just start putting some of these in. Some little grasses here, just at the bottom. Just to help sit the fences, the fence posts down. Just to help sit them down in the ground. Okay, that's all. And we can also get some of the darker ones. Now we get some dark colour, some brown. Put a little bit of that through here and there. Then I'll take some of this nice bright colour and I'm going to just pop a few little bits and pieces in here and there. I'd say maybe a palette knife would be the best way forward for these. I'm thinking it might be just pop a few in there with the palette knife. And it's really from here on I was just about making the painting look busy. Okay? Making a painting just look like there's a lot going on with the snow and everything. I'm going to get myself some light pink. And I'm just going to go create some texture on this. Okay, just here and there. So you can see now, we didn't really copy the photograph. I only copied the drawing of the photograph, really. But I just pretty much made it my own. You know? Um, especially when it comes to this stage, 
I really hardly even look at the photograph that much, to be quite honest. Um, I just kind of tend to add my own bits and pieces into it. Go here, for example. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that in there, just to make it all look nice and thick and snowy. That's all. I'll mix up some dark, crimson, some blue, and I'm just going to, with that color, I'm just going to add some little bits of darks in, which I'll then soften with my soft brush later. And there we are. Now I'm going to add again. Some black. I'm going to get some black. Maybe a hint of brown. And just at the back of this post. I'm going to add a little dark. Okay. I want to do the same with this one. Just darken it up a little bit. I think it just needed to be slightly darker. And also, around the center, some blue. Now, pull those in together. And my friends, I don't see the need to keep going with this. You can just take your time if you wish and just really take your time and put in all the subtle little details. But I just wanted to create a nice soft painting for you today. Just something easy to follow. Okay? I, didn't, I don't want to be going to too much trouble um, with a painting like this. I just wanted to keep it nice and simple. That's all I wanted to do. There we go. Just put that down like that. I think just one small detail, a bird. I think just one bird flying off Like so. And my friends, I am calling this finished. I am quite happy with it. I could keep going and going and going. But again, there's that fear that you might spoil it or you might ruin it. Okay? I'm going to leave it at that. And I'll say thank you so much for joining me. Um, I might just add a little hint of warmth onto the edge of that. Should we? Come on, let's try it. We have the paint, let's try it. A very, very warm colour. Let's just catch the sun. That, perhaps just some Naples yellow as well. Okay. there we are my friends thanks so much I hope you've enjoyed that that's really refreshing to paint something nice and bright something warm and cool um, you know playing with playing around with colours really thank you so much for tuning in I hope you've enjoyed it please do try it let me know what you think and let me know how you're getting on with yours and please do send it to me um, at stephenconway12 at gmail.com if you'd like me to see it I'd love to see it and I'll see you all very soon for another tutorial. Uh, God bless and happy painting.